Data had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. Okay, and this means all the economic structures, all the global institutions and the economics we teach everyone is all designed to keep Africa exactly where it is. We need Africa to be impoverished because we need those raw materials and we need them dirt cheap. We cannot afford to allow Africa to industrialize and start producing manufacturers. Okay, so we will do everything to stop that. So in the earlier period, we had Japan and Korea and Taiwan. Okay, rapid growth, sucking in raw materials from Africa, driving up the prices. And after those countries finished industrialization, then sub-Saharan African growth rate again fell. Hmm. Well, there's a four minute long video that went viral. Right. In fact, it was my father that sent it to me. I said, okay. <laughs> um, so, referencing the Global Journal of Politics and Law Research, Nigeria, amongst, um, among the third world country, went through almost a century of colonial experience from 1861 to 1960, um, when she got her political independence. Since independence, Nigeria has been struggling in the cause of political instability, economic and social cultural imbalances. And like other third, um, third world countries, the nation has been hugely confronted with underdevelopment, which emanated from dominant exploitative character of the Western economies on which those of the third world depend. Now the question now is, can Nigerians rise above this Western influence? Given that most times, especially even with this politics, we saw every single leader running for presidency going to Chatham House to give a speech, like almost like seeking for a stamp of approval. Now, that's the question. Can we truly rise above Western influence? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. Um, we'll open up phone line shortly, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts on this. Um, so, I saw a report that was rather shocking. Or will I, It's not really shocking because this report has always... These things have always been said in different quarters. I mean, if you are a, if you are a follower of what's his name, Sheon Kuti, he will keep telling you, I mean, things like this, that this is where our problem, you know, and all of that. So prior to, um, this was a report that I found online. I think um, Afiz Tokperaji is the author of the, the report. He says, prior to European interaction with Africa, both units had existed fairly well in their geographical enclave and developed civilization best suited for them for avoidable reason however europe had to demand reaping from africa what she um so not so how briefly so then he now talks about the peace that the african continent has always been a land of mystery to the europeans that though europeans knew little about the continent its people custom its tradition and interiors as a whole a lot of them were highly curious about um, the continent and in the 19th century, kingdoms started to pay great attention to Africa and um, a lot of scientists, missionaries, explorers uh, flooded Africa, which they saw extremely astound or astonished by, by them. Now, the African continent was full of impressive sites, exotic animals, unique landscape, ingenious people, which their own culture and their life were completely different from. Right? So as a result, the widely known scrabble for Africa had begun leading to a colossal um, colonization of the continent that left lasting um, impressions and far-reaching effects on the indigenous people in Africa. One of such effects, are arguably the most detrimental, was the effect on the indigenous industries. Right? So you see right now, let me stop there, I'll come back again to it. You see right now that Instead of us as Africans to process what we eat, right, we'd rather take raw materials from our continent, take it to the Western world, and bring in finished goods. I mean, I, I, that was why I saw a video of the Ghanaian president saying that whether we like them or not, we're not going to chop Ghanaian chocolates. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Because they, they just realized that this is our power. 
right why can't we process the things within then whatever you want you take the, the the processed one no longer will we be selling our cocoa for cheap and then you'd bring us very expensive chocolates right so let's start to embrace some of these things you know so but now is it possible because we have grown to so much love our our mouth the flavor i mean somebody was talking to me today and said his mother-in-law she does not even eat the local cereal anymore Right. So every time he has to travel, he has to bring in the imported cereal and all of those things. So our, our taste bud is so used to, yeah. um, what's it called? Foreign. Everything foreign. So is it possible for us to rise above the Western influence? Angie, it seems like you're itching to talk. I, know, I, <laughs> I just feel like it's going from every, just listening to you already. Mm. Kind of answers the question that we are far from that. It's just like the question, you know, the last time I was on set and Jennifer was making a statement and she said, are we really ready for the change we mm. are requesting for? Can we go back to when, like how we used to be? The answer is no. Hmm. The answer is no. The only thing I feel like we can do or we, the only thing we can do is just be cautious of how we move going forward and do things for the best interest of the country mm. and not for selfish interest mm. so a lot of things that have gone wrong have been because of selfish interest colonization chain religion and what have you that was brought into the country was for selfish interest not because they wanted to make nigeria better or africa or the mm. continent or yeah. africa or the continent mm. looking at if you finish that video you would see that he called africa a raw raw material supplier and yeah, producer that's it so this is how we are viewed we are viewed from the angle of we produce raw materials so they uh, it's almost like the whole idea behind colonization is to suck out the natural resources from africa as a whole and then subject us to the point where we feel like the that like the western culture would always be above us mm. meanwhile we as Africa, we are indeed greater, greater in every ramification, but like everything. But due to also lack of education, so of who sold us this lie? Of even know because you can only be sold. I feel like you can only be sold a lie when you do not know. You're not informed. When you are not informed, when you do not know the truth. If you do not know the truth, then someone can sell you a lie. It's because we did. We never really, you know, stood to appreciate who we are as Africans. And that's the reason why, if you go, that's the, re let me give, give an example. I feel like Nigeria's, um, or Africa's case is a case of like a record label. You see someone that has great talent, you know, most, this is this normal story, M a, a producer, you know, someone takes you under his wings, produces some, some, you know, tracks for you, shows you the ropes, takes you out there, introduces you to people and enlarge your, your, your rich, your rich. And then after a while you now realize that you have been cheated because you were doing the major work i know that this person is your producer but because they had that because you always saw them from that point of view of you were below and they were and above, they were also naive. without knowing your that's the thing without knowing your value is the reason why you know eventually most of them give it a couple of years their eyes open and then you hear of scandals and you hear of issues and everybody is always crying well this one we've done how many years now our eyes have not opened yet but let yes. me come to you Mary, because <laughs> i mean this is interesting I, I mean you are somebody that sells luxury things <laughs> let's even take it from the angle of your specialty no 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 let, let's be fa factual right okay. there was a time in this country where we took pride in the things that we manufactured right i mean there, there was a time heads of state for instance as as you know you might seem that these things are basic but these things had a major imprint on us right cars it was pushed all over now we have a an indigenous brand in us on in our backyard here but we would rather still take hundreds of millions to buy the 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 brands the german brands the korean brands even chinese will brand buy, will you buy innocent hold innocent. on i will buy it for your next car. of course i will buy it you buy it i will buy it <laughs> <laughs> and i'm not even about to even uh, lie on national tv if i have the money i will buy it but so but tell me why <laughs> why have we gotten so engrossed in believing that our dependency and everything that we stand as africans it's is tied to you know we must go and consult with the western world 
Um, first of all, I think it's a case of we're blessed and we don't know that we're blessed. And if you don't know, you can't give what you don't know. Second of all, the Western side of the world, they set a standard which we will try to catch up on. What, what I think we need to do is infuse more of our culture in the things that, like not forget, it's like a child leaving the house and your, your father says, don't forget the, the son of who you are when you're going. So it's like we've gotten so used to everything foreign and that we're leaving back our own things. Second of all, we don't have a platform to help us maximize these things. We produce one of the best leathers in, I think it's Kano or Kaduna in the northern part of Nigeria. But how are you able to finesse your product? That even if a white man sees it, who is of the top class, is still going to say, oh, you know, uh -uh, Africa, this is made from Africa, this is nice. Well, sometimes we're very tacky in some of the things we do. Our finishing. Yes, our finishing is not there, which is why they have the edge over us. And we're, now that we have people running away to um, outside the country for education, they're not willing to come back to develop their own countries. Hmm. Because there's no platform here that is giving you that ability. So what do you want to do? You're making, you're producing um, chocolates that you know that if truly and truly you give to everybody it's not going to be nice so what should we pretend that we like it over the one abroad just because we want to seem like we're cultural come on okay. there's a there's a big difference between like modernization and everything like westernization it has it has also helped us mm. but i think we just should learn how to infuse culture into it and not let them have the edge like coming here to take raw materials from us is because we don't have a platform to use the raw materials. They produce Nigerian rice. We don't want to because we think it's not up to standard. Mm. But if many of us decide, okay, you know what? We're going to embrace it. Fine. And we start buying this thing and it's actually quality and it's actually up to standard. Come on, everybody will follow suit. Even laws in place by the government to say, okay, you know what? Import we import everything now. Mm -hmm. We import so much. And even the people in, that are sitting in government, are they not taking from the importation too? Okay, so um, let me read another part of this report that says, the first objective of, co of colonialism is political domination. Its second objective is to make possible the exploitation of the colonia um, colonized country, albeit practically. The latter remains the core. That the former is just a peripheral, meaning to this extractive end, as shall be shortly, of course, um, shown shortly. So what he was saying, it says colonialism began as a result of changes in the mode of production in Europe, right? The emergence of industries, revolution, uh, the revolution of industries. And some of these people, they don't realize that the big problem is that a lot of the raw materials for them to be able to do what it was, they didn't have it. So if Africa decides today as a continent to say we are not dealing with any country giving out our raw materials, all these countries are dead. If you had finished the video from the, the, the professor that was talking, mm -hmm. all these countries are completely comatose because they, 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 they rely solely on the African market. So it is in their interest that we do not have good governance. It is their interest that we do not have stability in our economy. It is now, it is in their interest that we do not have the right leaders in power. They need to keep on having leadership that they can control. Leadership that still sees them as superior. So if we understand this system, why are we not putting heads together as Africans to say, you know what, we need to fight this? Because now the target has never been about um, the reason that they are very much, and I mean, when you listen to that guy, they didn't give you handouts. They didn't give you, what's it called, uh, scholarships. They give you grants. They give you all of those things. So they keep making you come back to depend on them, thinking that, oh, these guys, without them, I would not have done this. Without them, I would not have done that. And that's why the Jackpa syndrome, right, is very, very strong. Because now they are even telling you, there are some countries they will tell you, you don't need anything. Just come with your passport. You will come and we'll give you 
And then because, because they need you. But because we're chasing things as simple as basic amenities, that's why you have people running there. A lot of people are out of the country and they're suffering. They're actually worse off than how they were even here in Nigeria. But nobody's going to talk about that part. They take a nice picture of their self in a nice place and you think that, oh, everything is all rosy. But they're suffering there. But at the head of, at the back of their mind, they're telling you, at least when I come back home, there's light. At least when I come back home, I'll see water. Mm. So, I mean, the, the platform for that change... It's going to take a while. It's not like it's unachievable. But it's going to take a while. There are just a whole lot of things we need to get right with ourselves before we start throwing blames out there. Yes, the blames are there. Yes, they are holding us captive. But we need to work on ourselves first. Before you now be if you're in prison, you're not just going to keep saying, Oh yeah, they just put me, they just put me in prison, they just put me. You're going to start thinking, okay, you know what? Reflecting on yourself, reflecting how can I be better? And mm. somehow, somehow things now begin to come and then you're free from it. And that's why we have growing industries. We have, I mean, I think, I think we're doing fairly well. When we're, we're not even close. But nowadays, you see um, in the fashion industry, Nigerian designers are, you know, going wild. It might not have, um, like, spread to industries in terms of, like... But that is where steel. we want it to spread to. You know, but it's, it has started thought. from somewhere. It has started from somewhere. Well, that is where the big money is. Let's take a break, because I would like us to open our phone lines. Some people have been trying to call the WhatsApp line. Please, we don't take calls on the WhatsApp line. It's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the topic, can Africans or can Nigerians rise above the Western influence? That's the question for today, and the number to call... Oh, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the rate one eight zero three four six six three. Um The phone line is now open and the number to call is 0702500 Remember, turn off the volume of your television set so we can hear ourselves. The number again 0702500 So please, those trying to reach the WhatsApp line, call this number. That's the number to call. I mean, so I, so the conversation, and this is where I, I, I like what you're saying. And we, we are tired of handouts. And that's why the kind of leaders that we have matter. Now, I will sh I will, we are farmers, for instance, right? Chinese people will come into your country. You will give them hectares of land to farm. You give them tax holidays. You give them all of those things. These same in incentives, you don't give it to your, 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 your citizens in Nigeria. Now, go and check all the restaurants in, in Lagos, for instance. I don't know about Even in Abuja. Most of, the, most of the top restaurants in Nigeria yeah. are owned by Lebanese people, for goodness sake. Mm. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. Would you, as Nigerians, go into their country and have that much leverage. And guess what? They're in the primest locations. Let me take our first caller for the evening. I don't know. You just raised my voice. This yeah, I'm Abdullahi, <laughs> you're live. Okay. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for calling. Yeah, thank you so much for having this conversation. It's quite interesting. Go ahead. Can you hear me? We can hear you clearly. All right. Well, to I think Africa, I think Africa and Nigerians can actually overcome this problem. But the first the first thing we need to do is to have an inner belief in ourselves. Mm -hmm. That we now know that there's a problem and that we're capable of making the right changes that are required of us. Mm -hmm. Each and every one of us, especially the educated ones, now know that we do not need this Western, this Western culture. We do not need this Western culture. Our leaders from the age of 60 and above, they have all let it down. We're not the reason why these people are there. It's not that we don't know, we know. The changes will come, and I'll show you that you young ladies just talking about this program today on TV, on live TV, is even a step forward in making that change. I guarantee you. Thank you. This will happen. Absolutely. Thank so you. Thank so you for much. having this conversation. Thank you, thank you Abdullahi. So, so Mary, so let me come back to you because you raised a very valid point, which is excellence, which is what you don't see with Nigerian products. But let me tell you something. When I started Ways, I don't think I was this good. When you joined the team, I don't think you were that good. What happens is when you keep giving people the opportunity to grow. Nigerians, we need to, I mean, he said, believe in ourselves. Believe enough that, okay, no matter what, let's keep trying. Let's provide the 
amenities. But we're not saying that. We're not seeing the process. It's like, eh, it's not working. Dump it. Let's go and get, you know. Ua, I'll give you an example. We had Hikish changing earlier today. Yes. And we said something about her. That everything she does, she puts excellence in it. It's changing. I will be proud to export that changing. From the packaging alone, from the look alone. That is a Nigerian who has decided I will be different. Who has decided I have gone outside, I've probably schooled abroad or whatever. And I will come back to my country and make a difference. When you showed me the factory, I was impressed. Oh, it's even made here in Nigeria. I saw it around the certain aesthetics, which, which are certain female Nigerians who have, you know, put themselves on a certain pedestal, yeah. you know, to set to international standards. And I'm like, okay, you know what? If something is coming from here, then a means that is of good quality. And I went for it straight. I'm not looking at it to say, oh, it's not falling or, you know, the, it's appealing to me. It tastes good. I will gladly buy local if it meets the standards. Mm. So it starts from us. If, you, if, if I come to your house and you tell me, ah, everything is um, Nigerian made, and I look at it and it's nice, I will go back to my house and think, oh, you know what? Oh, where did you get those things from? Uh, uh, this table is made in Nigeria. Oh, okay. You know, we can get it here as well. I would go as well. I want to get it. Hmm. So for me, that's it. Are we, are, we, are we putting our best? Yes, we have these natural resources. Are we using it? Hmm. With the knowledge that we have, are we using it? We... So let me call. <laughs> NG has been doing hum, hum, hum. Oh, yeah, come <laughs> for me. Because you know, I have... Uh, hey. it's, it's different. You know, seeing things from... I, I'm, I'm actually... Why I was, you know, making side comments because I was like, okay. I'm actually seeing things from her, her own point of view because, yes, we cry about these things a lot. But we also know what we gain from it. There are a lot of people... We, there are parts of this colonization that cannot be changed. You know, the effect cannot be resolved in a day. The effect would have to start, or rather, would the repair would have to start by what, like what Abdullah said, from us, us believing from in the ourselves. mental. When it happens in the subconscious, then it comes down to the conscious and you can actually, mm. you know, leave it. So we need to get to the point where we start reorientating ourselves and re-engaging mm. our minds mm. into what it actually means to be indigenous, what it means to be local. And it's not just about wearing Ankara. It's not just about wearing Ankara. Let me take Eminike because that's what they think it is about. <laughs> Eminike from um, uh, Umwahia. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good evening, Lucy. Hi, good, good evening. evening. Yeah, the middle of it's looking like a way. Very good to me. Thank you. Uh, you see, the problem starts with leadership. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all think are comfortable. We, when we begin to believe in ourselves, just like what well, the first speaker said, when we begin to believe in ourselves, then we begin to talk of putting things right. Since after the uh, Nigerian Civil War, there are things we would have been able to take and begin to develop and make our country better. But because the Western world see challenge, they will face in marketing their products. They just give us handouts to suppress and kill our initiatives and their leaders bought into it. And that has stopped us where we are. Look at what is coming out of Abba and many other places in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nobody is so interested. We talk of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. this. We talk of um, the Asian Tiger and all that. We criticize their product. But today, they are very well internationally. Mm. So until we begin to believe in ourselves and not allow some um, kind of uh, a tribalism and all that to overshadow us, mm. let us begin to believe ourselves. Very fast. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you so much. So let's try to keep our conversations within a minute so we can have more callers in. I mean, it's interesting how, yes, people are saying believe in ourselves. I was going to come to Made in Abba. Made in Abba, there was a time it was, ah, Abba, ah, God forbid. See, the problem, uh, Mary, first of all, it has never been about the quality. It is the mindset that you just think that everything in Nigeria is inferior. So even when you see people that are trying to genuinely make efforts, right? The same thing that you have praised. Some people have also said, ah, no, it doesn't taste right, right? So I'm saying to you that until, you, first of all, you must take pride in that the fact that it was done here, eh? Forget it, I don't need any other conviction. Then we cannot talk about other things later. Now, I've tasted some of, tasted some of this Ghanaian chocolate. Honestly, it's not something that you like to leave in your mouth for a very long time. But guess what? <laughs> no, but I'm being honest. But guess what? This, you will see that there is conscious effort for continuous improvement. And that's why MNK's comment is very important. Everything rises and falls on leadership. So whether it is the, the car is good or not, whether it has the aesthetics, we, are, we have this rent-seeking mindset. We, are more, we prefer to ride all the designer. I mean, my, myself and my sisters were talking the other day. I said, it is, it is, it is very, very foolish of me to wear a designer brand that the logo is all over my body. Did they pay me to be their stamp uh, uh, poster child? With my own money, I spent thousands of dollars to, to buy that designer. No, even if I was going to wear a designer brand, it is the one that you would have to check the label to see the designer name. Not that the one that it has all the stamps. You know the brands I'm referring to. But go and check the Nigerian industry, right? You come into a place, they first of all size you and look at it if I'm worthy to talk to you or not. So the problem we have is deeper than just the fact that somebody has paid attention to excellence is that we do not see, we look at ourselves and we look at ourselves as inferior. And that is the ideology that was sold to us. Because you are talking about westernization, you are talking about, um, what's it called, advancement. The West, they were scared as to how we were living in, in, in the manner we were living, so coordinated and everything. The, the introduction of the chaos and all of these things that we're talking about was deliberate. So they now made it look like it was their religion that was better. It was the West, um, what's it called, their education that was better. It was all of those things that they were doing that were better. So we also bought in that idea. So my point is that we have stayed there for too long. When do we leave that mindset and begin to get, our, get rid of this Western influence? Because guess what? Your president will talk to you on a Plus TV Africa Always show. You will not listen. But let him say he wants to go and uh, feature on an international TV channel. Everybody will be tuned in. It's the same thing. It cuts across every single thing. And until we as Nigerians begin to, first of all, have it consciously that we have been programmed to think in a certain way and act in a certain way and begin to consciously, you know, uh, uh, the, the, what's it called, deprogram that kind of mindset, we will not go anywhere. Just to add to what you said, it's just like what, ha what ha needed to happen in China, what they did in China. Thank you. They literally, the, and it was a, it was a decision, a conscious decision, just but like you yes. said. yes. They knew they were going to suffer, but they, because of what they were going to gain at the end of the day and how beneficial that move was going to be for the entire country was the reason why the entire country, whether or not they wanted to, had to buy into it. NJ, and how was the quality of Ch Chinese um, clothes then? It was very bad. Very shabby. But even the fashion industry in Nigeria has taken a turn in terms of we're being globally recognized. We have, and people are wearing, so people are wearing, we don't have are, to be globally recognized. Yes, but at the same time, even now, people are doing, like people are pulling up looks, even with Nigerian designers. But maybe that, it has been happening over time. Designers have been using Nigerian raw materials and African raw materials and to I'm do their now, designs for a And I'm saying time. that, yes, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. But what I'm saying is gradually, gradually, Industries where we're beginning to Mary, accept you are not getting it. my point. Let what me explain what I'm saying. Okay. My point is, you don't have. To, I don't have to wait for the Western to stamp a a seal of approval that my product is good before I would know that my product is good, which is what we're always doing. Do you understand? So a designer comes up and the designer is doing amazingly well. Nobody recognizes designer. A Beyonce now picks that designer and says, sign me a cloth. And all of a sudden, everybody's running to that designer. No, it doesn't have to be that way. We have local influencers too that no, influence you're, that. So, you're not even, you're, so the, the point is, over time, right, we always wait to seek approval from, from the, the Western, Western world. We always do that. And I'm saying that I am tired of that. We are done. 
We need to start waking up to the reality. What you said about China closing their borders. They had to close their borders. When I was growing up, it was either guari rice or abaleke rice, ab uh, bakaleke rice that we used to eat. There were stones inside. But imagine if they had stayed, right? Now they will not be at the same quality or at the same whatever now. But guess what? Because nobody started, nobody bought them. Everybody abandoned those things and they were going to Okubens, going to all those other That's brands. Matter. What happened? You know? Um, then finally, even in my house now, I don't eat any other rice. There's one, my, farm, my friend is a farmer, she farms of other rice. Eh? Even if I'm cooking it, it's smelling, I'm still eating it like that. Because first of all, our rice is even healthier. They sold us the idea that palm oil was not healthy, and all of a sudden they said there was an influx of, of vegetable oil. You now know, they are coming back to say, oh, palm oil is healthy. You know, most of the international products, the same thing. See, uh, a lot of things Let have been... Let me take been, another like, caller. I think Abdullah is he, is he back again. You're live, please. All right. Hello. Yes, yeah. go ahead. Okay. No. It's interesting listening to what you're saying. And uh, like I said, I'm really trying to probably, uh, you, you guys have this discussion. But I would like to break this thing down to the Nigerian concepts. We already have a solution in this country. All we have to do is simple. The evils, may God bless them, have shown that we are capable of doing anything we choose to do. Absolutely. Just like the just, just like the last part of it, that I said, go to Abba. You'll be amazed with what you see in Abba. Thank you. Innocent motive is from the East. The evils are engineers of what we need to change Nigeria. If only our politicians and our, and our leaders will understand that all we need to do is replicate our back in each political zones of this country. Give them the space, give them the track, give them the money, give them the give them whatever they want. The Igbos are capable of changing this country once and for all. Thank you, Ab Abdullahi. You are spot on. And I'll say to us as Nigerians, we need to put aside this idea that, because it makes no sense. I used to say this thing to my friends like joke. I say, I wish I, I came as an evil girl. I will not be, me and you will not be on the same level. Because guess what? By now I would have blown. You know, because there is, a, so you must tap into what you have, right? About yes, they, they, they were substandard things. You will see Gucci instead of Gucci or whatever. But whatever it is, they are making an effort. So if a government was thinking right, what were you supposed to do? You are supposed to provide. Imagine having an industrialized state that you can come and produce, mass produce the genes, mass produce whatever it is. Whatever it is that you're looking There's no product you're looking for on earth that does not have a copy in, 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 in Abba. Instead of you to take advantage of that. And that's the same spirit that the Chinese people have. We're not taking advantage of that. Instead, we are mocking and saying that ah, it's a fake or it's cheap or it's whatever. Let me take Loma from Abia, then we'll now take our final comments. <laughs> oh, you're angry. What? I'm just upset. Loma, you're alive. Please, you have a minute. Good evening, my dear people. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. Um, based on the question that is on the screen, um, it would be possible for Nigerians to have the world waiting in China because we depend much on foreign products. But if we can go back to production than consumption, once we decide to uh, embark on production uh, than consumption, then that is where we will rise about this. And uh, we will now try to use what we have and get what we need. Mm. That is the only time we can rise above what we need. Because now we see our big men, once they are sick, they go outside. They want, they want any slight thing, the product they want to buy, they buy what products. But if we decide to uh, now say, let us start using what we have, I'm telling you, that is when we will rise above it. Absolutely. Depending on our own product, making sure we make our product of a quality that good for the market. Thank but you this so month, much. It will not be easy for we to rise above it. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Loma.
Ladies, your topic, Can Nigerians Rise Above Western Influence, to me is a call for sober reflection for us as Africans to begin to look inward and to access our actions and relationship, um, relationships with the Western world. Unfortunately, we Africans refuse to stand up for ourselves, to take our destinies into our hands. Um, we refuse to grow up and we keep remaining as babies in terms of leadership, econo uh, leadership, economic in relation, in relation to Westerners. Now, we want them to continue to babysit us, to tell us how we can think and move. African continent was not the only continent, um, was not, African continent was not the only continent the Western colonized in the world. Others have moved on with their lives, but Africans are still sitting, they're, they're calling our colonizers masters. Until we begin to believe in ourselves and to let ourselves know we have equal rights with the Western world, they will continue to treat us um, the way they are treating us. We must learn to rise to ourselves and defi define our world like the Chinese people did to themselves. Nobody colonized, um, colonized China, but today they are also like world power economically, politically, and otherwise. This is from Santos. Let's take more comments and we wrap up. Quickly. China did it. China did it. Closed its borders for 40 years and adapted. It is known the second largest economy in the world. Buhari closed out border to help us grow what we eat and everybody started shouting hunger. We are not ready to pay the price for development. Subsidy was given to Nigerian farmers, but they decided to sell and consume the seedlings and farm tools. Terrible. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, it is possible, but the leadership, which is supposed to show the way, is not ready. How long would we be taken for granted? We have refineries that are not working, whereas one man within a short time built one. What of our leaders who patronize hospitals abroad, even for mere toothache? Where are, where are the Kaduna and Asaba textile mills? Because our leaders have knack, have knack for imported clothes, furniture, and even toothpicks, whereas we have abundant raw materials waiting to mm. be harnessed. The Chatham House is exactly what we what we have known as the National Institute for International Affairs, NIIA, but they prefer abroad. What a country, what a country where a president prefers to speak to foreign media, preferably mm. when the leadership gets it right, the citizens will fall in line. Absolutely. God bless Nigeria. This is from Absolutely. Austin. From Thank Delta. you so much. On that note, we can't take more comments. We apologize if we can't take your comments. Um, but thank you, ladies. I think we had a fantastic conversation. I was a bit heated up today, but God will help me. The matter is very, you know, dear to my heart. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further and follow all our engagements online. Remember to like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. My people have been successfully managing their political system before the advent of the whites in Africa. And even the presence of white brought distortion to the African political and economic system. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>